Hey everybody, Arnaldo here, broadcasting from Fidelio's Frequency. Welcome to my channel. So it's been a while uh, that I started a Smith's miniseries called The Sun Shines Out of Our Behinds. And we're finally at episode two. Sorry this took so long, but episode two is finally here. And in this episode, we will be taking a look at what, in my opinion, is the perfect Smith's record. So cue the intro and I will see you in a bit. I could have picked my favorite Smith's album and said, hey, this is the perfect Smith's record. Um, but flipping through my collection, I realized that the Smiths put out not only great studio albums, they put out great compilations and a ton of 12 inch singles. Um, they put out a 12 inch single for every, almost every single, except maybe for the first one, Hand in Glove, um, a, a corresponding 12 inch single for every single that they put out. Uh, all these 12 inch singles had uh, pretty much unreleased at the time of release uh, b-sides anywhere between two to three extra songs on each single uh, 12 inch single and I realized that there is one 12 inch single that captures the essence of the Smiths um, almost to perfection and that's why I think this one is the perfect Smiths record and I'm talking about William, it was really nothing. The 12 inch single. Uh, why? Because of the selection of songs. Uh, first of all, we have William, it was really nothing, the title track. And then probably two, actually, not probably, almost most certainly, two of my favorite Smith songs, which are How Soon Is Now and Please, 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 Let Me Get What I Want. They're not just my favorite, some of my favorite Smith songs. I think they're actually some of the most representative songs um, in their catalog. First, we have How Soon Is Now, which is uh, probably the most iconic, the most recognizable, also the most popular uh, Smith song, the most, probably the most played Smith song on the radio today. <clears throat> and then we have the shortest Smith song, uh, which is please, please, please let me get what I want. And that has been included on quite a few uh, movie soundtracks. But let's start with the release of William. It was really nothing. It was released, it's their fifth single. It was released in August of 1984, I believe, August 20th. It peaked at number 24 in the UK chart. So that means it was actually quite successful for a single of the Smiths. Um, clocks in at only two minutes and nine section, nine, nine seconds. Um, and that is pretty standard for a Smith song, especially their um, A-sides. Uh, they were all roughly around two minutes. Uh, in very few cases, they even reached three minute uh, in length. Um, the song structure, very unique. Uh, it starts off with a verse and then is followed by three sections which are almost like three different choruses and then the song just ends uh, leaving you wanting more or expecting probably another verse uh, or another chorus uh, or the return to the previous chorus. Um, so quite genius the way it was structured, not only musically, but also lyrically. Musically, Johnny Marr um, is kind of capturing the feel, the guitar feel um, of the Hollies on this one. And lyrically, uh, Morrissey has um, been pretty open about the song being about, of course, marriage, but from a male point of view versus marriage up till then, maybe in in literature was always presented from a female point of view and here he's basically sometimes a bit cynical in maybe minimizing the importance of a marriage maybe because he doesn't believe in it in the institution uh william 
It's been speculated um, that William referenced in the song is actually Billy McKenzie, the singer and member of the Associates, uh, whom uh, Morrissey was friends with. And to validate that rumor, actually a few years after this, uh, Billy McKenzie put out a song uh, called Steven, You're Really Something. Um, <clears throat> And the opening line, one more thing to say about this, is the opening line, uh, the rain falls down on this humdrum town. Uh, this town has dragged you down, has taken, or at least has been inspired uh, by a, the Spark song, by a verse or a line in the Sparks song. This town is uh, not big enough for the both of us. Uh, the line goes, the rain is falling, um, on this foreign town, the bullets cannot cut you down. Uh, Morrissey's always um, championed Sparks. He's always said he was a very big fan of the Sparks and still is actually. Um, <clears throat> so that was William, it was really nothing uh, on the A side of this 12 inch. On the B side here, we have the first appearance of How Soon Is Now. How Soon Is Now is, like I said before, probably the most popular song by the Smiths. The title, How Soon Is Now, was taken from a Marjorie Rosen uh, film called Popcorn Views. And one of the verses, one of the lines in um, How Soon Is Now, I'm the son and heir of nothing in particular, uh, clearly inspired by a George Eliot um, line, uh, to be born the son of a Middlemarch uh, manufacturer and heir to nothing in particular. I think that's taken from uh, Middlemarch. Um, I think that's his, uh, yeah, one of his novels. <clears throat> now, why, apart from the lyrical content and the fact that it is probably one, it's the second longest uh, Smith song, uh, how curious, it could have been on the same single, the longest and the shortest Smith song, uh, but actually Barbarism Begins at Home is just maybe four or five seconds longer than this. This is a pretty long song. Uh, clock's in, I think, at like six minutes and almost 50 seconds. Um, <clears throat> but the importance of the song is represented mostly by the shift in sound of the, of the Smiths. Um, that indie sound, uh, the indie guitar, jingy jangly kind of sound is totally absent. Uh, and here we have a much more robust rock sound from the Smiths. Um, and that's thanks to Johnny Marr. He has um, said that the intention or the feel, the atmosphere that he wanted to capture was more of like a swampy feel uh, taken um, from uh, like Credence Clearwater's um, Run Through the Jungle, but not their version, the version by a group called The Gun Club. That was almost the, the atmosphere that he was aiming for. And then there's a few other um, songs that influenced him. Uh, most importantly, the rhythm guitar uh, part was influenced by Disco Stomp by um, Hamilton Bohannon. It's a track that um, Morris, uh, that um, Johnny Marr remembers as a child, um, and he was a big fan of it. And so here we have that almost, I don't want to say like R&B, but like dancey kind of inspiration or background uh, for Johnny Marr. Um, the initial um, effect of the guitar um, was inspired by a Can song. Uh, called I Want More. And throughout the song, you hear almost this cascading um, piano sound. Um, Johnny Moore has always said that uh, Love Bug Starsky's uh, You Gotta Believe was the inspiration for that cascading piano sound that you hear here and there. Um, what else can we say about How Soon Is Now? It's been covered quite a few times. Uh, Love Spit Love, the side project of um, Psychedelic Furs, uh, did a great version for the Kraft soundtrack. The um, duo uh, Tattoo did a more poppy version of How Soon Is Now. And the track, the guitar track was sampled 
uh, by uh, Soho um, in their song, Hippie Chick. Now, um, before we move on to the last song of the B-side, um, I wanna just mention how this single, when it was recorded and presented to uh, Jeff Travis, who is the owner of uh, Rough Trade, um, they didn't know what to do with it. They saw it as a huge departure uh, from the sound up until then. Morrissey's voice is a lot more confident. Uh, his vocal abilities are a lot more, um, he's mastered them quite a, quite a lot more than from the previous releases and you can hear it. Uh, and also the shift in sound was pretty dramatic for this song that Jeff Travis thought it best to not put it out as an A-side and rather relegate it to the B-side. Um, what a mistake because the um, uh, Dutch uh, affiliate of this or distributor of the Smiths or representative of the Smiths in uh, Holland decided against uh, William as a, as an A-side and put it put uh, How Soon Is Now as the A-side and changing the artwork slightly. Um, oh, by the way, here is the single version. Um, they did a version that was um, lilac tinted instead of green tinted and actually that is one of the uh, rarities amongst the uh, Smiths discography. So if you happen to come across the lilac tone of uh, William, it's really nothing which in reality is um, <clears throat> How Soon Is Now, definitely grab that. Rough Trade, of course, like I said, backtracked and four months later or five months later, realized the potential of How Soon Is Now and decided to release it as its standalone single and 12 inch. Um, and this time backed by um, a song that was from the forthcoming Mita's Murder album called Well I Wonder and by a toss away, um, I call it that, um, instrumental track called Oscillate Wildly. And uh, the US label also included How Soon Is Now to the Smith's huge disappointment and disagreement um, in the US version of Meat is Murder. I believe it was the first track of Side B. Uh, oh, I wanted to talk about also the artwork. Um, the model on the, Morrissey curated all, all of the Smith's um, artwork, uh, at least while uh, they, all, of all the official UK releases, at least while they were in activity. This is probably one of the few um, models that were used. I say model because typically Morrissey's always referred to them as cover star. This cover star is uncredited because uh, it was lifted from an ad for a speaker company. The company ADS um, used this as one of their ads and uh, I will show you in the uh, uh, picture here above, um, the original ad. Um, it came to their attention, to ADS's attention, that they there was an unauthorized use of it. And when Rough Trade had to repress, uh, I believe in 1987, repressed the William It Was Really Nothing 12-inch um, single, they actually had to change the artwork to this, which is the cover with uh, Billy Whitelaw. Um, still has the same songs. Um, William was really nothing, How Soon Is Now, and Please, Please, Please Let Me Get What I Want, um, but with a different cover star. So going back to um, How Soon Is Now, uh, they've always said the Smiths uh, I mean, Johnny Marr and Andy Rourke, the bass player, have always said that it, performing the song live was the bane of their existence because it was so difficult to recreate uh, that guitar effect, which was actually a studio trick. It wasn't a pedal. Um, it was no other type of effect. It was just um, them twiddling, feeding the guitar 
uh, which was recorded without any effects on it through uh, guitar amplifiers and twiddling the tremolo knobs, basically. Uh, that's how they achieved that um, swampy and, you know, tremolo effect of the guitars, which was very difficult to reproduce live. And if you see Johnny Marr now live, um, I can't tell the difference. Maybe they figured out a way to um, reproduce it better. Uh, maybe they have a different pedal effects now, but it sounds fantastic to me whenever I've seen uh, Johnny Marr perform it live with his group. And finally, um, the last song on the B-side is Please, Please, Please Let Me Get What I Want, one of my favorite Smith songs. Uh, the shortest Smith song, like I said before, only a minute and 50 seconds long. Uh, Johnny Marr has said he was always inspired by Adele Shannon uh, song um, to answer to anything um, when he composed the music for uh, Please 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 and uncredited playing the mandolin is their producer John Porter and song was used in Pretty in Pink and I believe also in Ferris Bueller's uh, Day Off and it is Please 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 Let Me Get What I Want is the first Smith song to be covered if we're excluding the EP with uh, Sandy Shaw in which the entire group plays. Uh, but the first artist to cover a Smith song was the Dream Academy and they covered Please 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 Let Me Get What I Want. So <clears throat> for me, William It Was Really Nothing, the 12 inch single, represents the perfect Smiths record. It has How Soon Is Now, William, it was really nothing, and please, please, please let me get what I want. Um, I can also add that if you come across a copy of either this or this, um, you will not be disappointed because probably the best version of How Soon Is Now is on these two 12-inch singles. So, uh, thank you very much for tuning in for this second episode of The Sun Shines Out of Our Behinds, and I hope to see you on episode three um, or on any other video of my channel. It costs nothing to subscribe, so if you get a chance, please hit the subscribe button and the notification button so that you will be um, notified for um, any future uh, videos that I will upload. So thank you again for watching, and I will see you on the next one. Bye.